Welcome back to Palangi 21. Today I will show you a 2012 American drama film titled Keep the Lights On. In 1998, Eric, a Danish filmmaker living in New York City. He meets Paul, a lawyer, via phone sex hotline. They are both attracted to each other. They share intimate moments and make love. After that, Eric gives his number in case Paul wants to call him back. Paul says that he already had a girlfriend. As a director in his 30s, Eric's films were not very successful. His sister wants to give Eric a job, but Eric refuses, because he still doesn't give up on pursuing his dream. Eric goes to visit a guy named Russ who seems more interested in showing off his muscles to Eric than making love. Eric then meets Paul again. He tells him about how he broke up with his ex-boyfriend Paolo, who is HIV positive. Meanwhile, Paul reveals that he has broken up with his girlfriend and wants to be with Eric. The next day, Eric tells his friend Claire about how he is happier now with Paul than his relationship with Paolo. Later, the two meet up again. This time Paul reveals that he often uses drugs. He invites Eric to do drugs with him, and then they make love. One day, Eric and Paul go to an art gallery together. Paul accidentally sees his ex-girlfriend. Eric tries to persuade Paul to introduce him to her, but Paul refuses. Paul meets her alone, while he tells Eric to hide. Outside, Eric calls Paul coward, before they laugh together. Eric rides with his friend Claire. She expresses her desire to have children with him, because they are in their mid-thirties. But Eric says that he can't because he loves Paul. Later, Eric calls his doctor to ask for the test results, and finds out that he is HIV negative. Meanwhile, Eric and Paul's relationship grows closer, and Paul throws a surprise birthday party for Eric. In 2000, Paul catches Eric talking to another man on the street. When asking Eric about this, Eric doesn't seem to care about his question. Paul gets annoyed and argues with him. But later, Eric tries to apologize and they make up. One day, while having dinner together, Claire tells a story about Paolo, Eric's ex-boyfriend. Paolo now looks even hotter, because he started working out, and he will soon move to Brazil with his new boyfriend. Claire asks where Paul is, but Eric can't answer because he didn't know where Paul was. After that, Eric keeps asking Paul about where he was from, but Paul refuses to answer Eric's questions. When away from home working on his documentary, Eric who feels lonely, calls the phone sex hotline. However, he is surprised when he hooks up with Paul. Back in New York, an irritated Eric gets back into an argument with Paul, but they make up again in the evening. One day, when Eric comes home from working on his documentary, he finds an unconscious Paul outside their apartment. Paul is sent to rehab and Paul says that Eric ruined his life. Eric goes to a gay club and meets a painter named Igor. They don't make love but they talk about their lives. In 2003, Paul finally gets out of rehab. He thanks Eric for his patience and love during this time, and he gives him a painting that Eric really likes. Finally Eric's film has been completed and is getting good acclaim. Eric thinks that things will get better with the success of his film. But Eric's life is shaken when he learns that Paul is missing and never comes to his office for work. As his sister comforts him, Eric gets a call from Paul telling him to visit him at his hotel. Paul exhibits erratic behavior, trying to pretend that he is fine while it is clear to Eric that he has not improved since rehab. Eric tries to convince Paul to return home, but Paul wants to stay at the hotel. He hires a male prostitute who makes love to him while Eric watches. Later, Eric visits Russ, and the two share drugs. In 2006, after not seeing each other for about a year, Paul meets Eric at a restaurant, where the two of them seem better than ever. Eric invites Paul to spend the night at his apartment. Paul agrees, and they cuddle when they sleep. Later, Eric meets Igor on the street, and the two are drinking at the bar. They talk about their lives. While spending time together in the countryside, Eric asks Paul how he feels about their relationship. Paul gives Eric a choice, to decide whether they move in together, or break up forever. Eric decides that they should move in together. But when Eric goes to Paul's apartment, he tells Paul that he has changed his mind. He walks Paul to his workplace. Paul says that they shouldn't see each other again. Eric says if Paul needs anything he can call him anytime. Then Eric admits that he still loves him, even though Paul has doubts about Eric's feelings. The two hug, and Paul tells Eric to be well. Eric a Danish documentary filmmaker meets Paul via phone sex hotline. Paul says he has a girlfriend, 
but he arranges to meet Eric anyway. What unites them is a physical connection. Eric and Paul seem to love each other, but they often fight, and Eric can't seem to put into words why he loves Paul. Sometimes makes it difficult for me to get emotionally involved in the ups and downs of the relationship between Eric and Paul. The reason why Eric stayed with Paul, still confuses me. Because Eric sometimes meets other men besides Paul. Even though they have remained together for many years, it is very difficult to say whether their love grows deeper. The storyline has many plot holes, because there are many time skips. The acting and chemistry is lacking. Their main problem lies in Paul's addiction to drugs, and Eric's ambition and inability to be faithful. This film follows a long-term relationship between two men who probably shouldn't have started it. They don't get along with each other, and although their sex life is successful in a physical sense, it begins to diverge in an emotional sense. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification.